Now you need to select what exactly are you going to measure. And this is where these people who rushed off and collected the data found they didn't actually collect the right stuff. So for every patient that you're including in your audit, you're going to develop, you're going to have a data collection sheet. If you're doing it electronically, it's going to be the same. It's still the same set of questions for that patient. These questions should be closed questions. You don't want to, for example, know the age of every patient in your audit, but you might like to know, are they over 65, are they over 70, or are they over 45, or are they, what age group are they? So it's, you know, it's a one option, if, if at all possible, have only one possible answer to that question. The questions need to be unambiguous, and they need to be objective. So you don't want to say, is the patient, you know, are they fat or are they anemic? You want to know what's their haemoglobin. You'll have decided what is, what's your definition of anemia. Or you want to know what's their BMI. Or are they over 25? Is it over 25? Or, or what level is it? So it's a fixed thing. It's not something that's going to be different. for. So you're not going to have 50 different categories of answers for the one question. You're going to have three categories, and you're going to be able to say, X percent of this group um, were anemic, and Y percent are not whatever you're, you're measuring. Take the data in a logical sequence. This is particularly relevant if you're working in a hospital setting because the charts can be chaotic. You might be taking some information from the nurse's notes. You might be taking some information from when they were admitted into the ED and then some of the wards. So collect the data so you're not revisiting the same bit of paper twice. Collect it in a logical sequence. There's a couple of other things to remember before you actually get cracking collecting the data. You need to consider how many cases you're going to include. Ian has reminded you time and again, it's not research. You're not trying to establish what is best, best practice, you are trying to establish do you adhere to best practice. You might, and you really need to take any, a number that's going to give you a credible result. If you've only got 20 patients in your practice with a particular problem, well, if you audit all 20 of them, you've got a, you know, a superb audit. But if you have a couple of hundred, then maybe it's reasonable to look for 35 patients, 30 patients, 40 patients. Um, you have to decide. It's not supposed to. It, you're not. It's not a statistical piece of work where you're going to be able, able to extrapolate. You're just looking at the experience of that snapshot of patients. You need to decide: Are you going to look retrospectively? Are you going to pull notes? Or are you going to look backwards over your notes? Or are you going to collect data as you go along? There are pluses and minus to, minuses to each. How are you going to identify the patients? If you're in a hospital setting, hype is the obvious source. If you're computerized practice, you may have a disease register, um, or you may use your medication listing if you haven't got an up-to-speed um, disease register. If you don't have either, you can, may find that your local pharmacist is quite useful. If you decide you want to do an audit on your diabetics, the pharmacist will be able to send you, the, give you the details of the patients for whom you've been prescribing. Now, that doesn't pick up the ones that are um, not on any medication, but you know these are ways of starting. Where are you going to get the data from? Is it in the chart or is it on a register somewhere or is it in some place? Um, and who's going to collect it? Going back to the stakeholders business, um, one of the problems we would have found in hospital is that lots of people they don't want to share an audit, they just want to do it themselves. That is not sensible. The more people who are involved, the more effective and easier it is going to be to make change. The more people are involved and taking the, who can collect the data, the less work you each do, the faster the whole thing happens. And just to backtrack a little bit, all the more critical then that if you and I are both going to collect data on patients, we understand precisely the same meaning from the question. And if I look at the patients you've looked at, I want to come up with the same set of answers. And similarly, if you look at the patients I've looked at, you want to produce the same results. So that's why the questions need to be very tight and very specific and very unambiguous. Um, two more quick points. Anonymity, uh, Ian has alluded to, to a little bit, but we talked about having a, you know, a, quest, a sheet with your questions on it. If you do that, don't have the patient number or the patient sticker on that sheet. It's log number one, Neave Macy. It's log number one. You'll have a separate sheet that will tell you log number one is Neave Macy. So if you want to go back and check, have I really got the right data on this one, something odd about it, you can go back. But if you lose the sheet, you haven't lost um, my confidential record. Log number two will be Ian's and so on. So that is important. And also, it's not part of the patient record then. Um, so again, once you've got your data collection sheet and you've decided you're going to say audit 30 patients, well, don't just lash into it then and pull the 30 charts or whatever. Do it on two or three. 
and see, I've said five or six, depends on what your numbers are. But you'll be surprised how often you're convinced that such and such an information is there or this will answer the question. And you find when you go to collect the data it isn't quite as you thought. It's surprising how often that happens. You might just make one or two small changes. And when you're reviewing the data you've collected, imagine you're trying to write, the, you know, you're trying to draw conclusions from this. And can you say how what percentage of the patients met this, this, the criterion and what standard have you achieved? And you may or may not be able to do it if you can't tweak the data that you're collecting to make sure you can.